Hey guys, we did it! Congratulations to all of you who stayed the course and finished all 12 chapters in our study through the book of Daniel. Today we'll chat for a short time about chapter 12, then at the end I have some questions for you to go over in your group. And these questions are designed to help us all process and discuss the things that we are learning together in the book of Daniel, and I can tell you that I look forward to the questions and discussion part every week in my own cell group. It's my favorite part because I get to interact with my group and hear lots of different perspectives and ideas I never would have thought of on my own, so it's good stuff. But anyway, this week we are no longer dealing with visions of ancient kingdoms. Daniel 12 is as applicable to us as news feeds on your phone or headlines in the newspaper. Last week, chapter 11, dealt with the military and political activities of the Antichrist. The opening verses of chapter 12 refer to the fortunes of the Jewish people during a time when the Antichrist is in control. The ruler is intent on a policy a brutal domination and persecution. And the end times will surpass in cruelty and oppression more than any other nation has ever experienced. It's very important to note that Jesus, as quoted in Matthew 24, picks up and enlarges on this prophecy. He said that there will be a great tribulation unequaled from the beginning of the world until now and never to be equaled again. But the good news is, the prophecy of Jesus was partially fulfilled when the Romans utterly destroyed Jerusalem in A.D. 70. The bad news is, the prophecy will not reach its climax until the end times which, as far as we know, isn't quite here yet. The tribulation period will last three and a half years and will be completed when God utterly destroys the armies of the Antichrist, which are arrayed against him. Fortunately, God gives Daniel the assurance that Israel and God-honoring people will be delivered from Satan's evil schemes. We've seen it happen before. The first time was when the Romans destroyed Jerusalem and scattered the Jewish people. In Ezekiel 20, 39-40, God prophesied that Israel would be scattered and brought back together as a nation at some time in the future. Now, this prophecy was fulfilled in 1948 when the United Nations recognized Israel as a sovereign nation. That's kind of a big deal. So verse 2 looks forward to the second coming of Jesus and the great white throne judgment of Revelation 20. And all those who have ever lived will be brought up out of the graves to be judged. It says, some to shame and everlasting contempt and some to everlasting life in Revelation 20, 13. Note that this is not to be confused with the judgment of believers. Now, once an individual has fully accepted Jesus as his or her Savior, they will no longer be judged. Now, their works will be judged, but only as a means of determining their rewards, from 2 Corinthians 5.10. Now, those who lead many to righteousness will receive their rewards. Some will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and others like the stars forever and ever in their resurrected bodies. This is reaffirmed in Philippians 2, 14 through 16. And Daniel tw chapter 12 is all about cause and effect. So those who have accepted Jesus during their lifetimes will come out of their graves to receive their heavenly rewards. And those who have not accepted the Savior's offer of forgiveness will arise to an eternity of punishment for their unforgiven sins. Now, verse 10 assures us that we will be purified and refined through the power of the Spirit, yet the wicked will continue to be wicked until Christ's return. 
So finally, we have the assurance that God's plan, as revealed through this prophetic book, will unfold down to the last detail. Now, that's the blessing of God's progressive revelation. And history proved God was right. And we can be assured that the future will unfold before our eyes just as he prophesied. May this give us the faith and resolve to go your way till the end, as the scripture says. Let's move into the discussion time. I hope the questions throughout this series have been thought-provoking and have provided you with something to think about as you grow in your walk with Jesus. And like we always do, I'll ask a question and put it on the screen and give you a moment to pause the video and discuss the question with your cell group. When you're ready, hit play and move on to the next question. Okay, so here we go. First question. How does God's prophecy about Satan's final destruction impact your faith? Press pause. Second question. In Daniel 12.10, the angel said that the saints would be purified, yet the wicked would continue to be wicked. Now, how does this fit into the reality of the kingdom of God not coming in fullness until Christ's final appearing? Press pause. Question number three. What is your response to God's assurance of our resurrected bodies in the establishment of his kingdom in fullness upon Christ's return? Now hit pause. And a bonus question, since this is the final video, give a final summary of how your faith has grown through this Daniel series. What are some areas you feel challenged you? Now hit pause. Well, that's it. We made it through the whole series. Way to go. And I hope you have enjoyed our time together as much as I have. I love hearing all the stories from you all on what God is doing in your life, how this series has stretched your faith, and where you feel God leading you. I look forward to hanging out with you again in our next series, The Parables of Jesus, starting soon. God bless you all. See ya.